the U.S. Empire can only exist in a continuous state of mass military violence. I shouldn't be able to do this for a living. Criticizing the warmongering of a single power structure shouldn't be anyone's full-time job. No government should be murdering people so consistently and reliably that people can plan their whole lives around it. Yet here we are. Not only are people like me able to focus on commentary about the mass military violence of the U.S. and its satellites as a full-time gig, but we usually find there's too much to talk about from day to day. Just today we're getting reports that at least 40 people have been killed in an IDF massacre on a tented encampment in southern Gaza near Khan Yunis, which Israel had previously designated as a humanitarian safe zone. There are videos of families digging frantically in the sand, trying to rescue loved ones who were buried by the blast, which was reportedly so forceful that bodies are being found some 30 feet down. Anti-war's Dave DeCamp has taken to typing up daily updates on the documented Israeli massacres of Palestinian civilians in Gaza, often with dozens of victims added to the official death toll in a single day. Kamala Harris has finally announced a foreign policy platform, and it contains nothing but a promise of more of the same. She promises to ensure that the United States remains the strongest, most lethal fighting force in the world, to make sure that America, not China, wins the competition for the 21st century, to strengthen, not abdicate, our global leadership, to stand up for Israel's right to defend itself, and to protect U.S. forces and interests from Iran and Iran-backed terrorist groups, and boasts that she has worked with our allies to ensure NATO is stronger than ever in the face of Vladimir Putin's brutal aggression. In other words, more unrelenting violence and militarism to ensure that the U.S. empire continues dominating the planet. It's not hard to see why Harris is winning endorsements from some of the worst warmongers on the planet. Bloodthirsty empire manager Victoria Newland is now openly admitting that the U.S. sabotaged a peace deal in Ukraine in the early weeks of the war, saying in an interview that Washington pushed Kyiv to reject the deal because it included limits on the precise kinds of weapons systems that Ukraine could have if it were not agreed to. This is something people like myself used to get called Russian propagandists for saying happened, despite all the overwhelming evidence that it had. The horrors in Ukraine are happening because the U.S. Centralized Power Alliance refused easy off-ramp after easy off-ramp. This whole war could have been easily avoided, and it could have easily been ended shortly after it began. But they kept pushing on, because they wanted this war. Bernie Sanders, the official face of progressivism in mainstream U.S. politics, actually said the words, I applaud the Cheneys during an appearance on NBC News' Meet the Press in response to the endorsement of Kamala Harris by Dick and Liz Cheney. There is no valid excuse for those words ever to come out of anyone's face, much less from someone who people regard as the voice of reason and compassion on Capitol Hill. When your progressive hero starts singing the praises of a monster like Cheney, it's time to find different heroes. These are just a few of the things happening right now that I could have easily written entire essays on. I always run into people who act like my constantly criticizing U.S. foreign policy day after day as a full-time gig is strange and suspicious, and it absolutely is, just not for the reasons they think. They think it's strange and suspicious because I must be getting paid by some subversive foreign government since nobody could possibly want to spend their time criticizing the Western power structure we live under otherwise. They believe this because they've been indoctrinated from birth into supporting the agendas and information interests of the U.S. centralized empire by the imperial propaganda machine which normalizes and justifies the criminality of our rulers, and trains them to view any information which conflicts with this mainstream worldview as sinister and suspicious. In reality, it's strange and suspicious that I can spend my life criticizing the depravity of the empire because the empire is so reliably depraved. It's a job that shouldn't exist, whose existence tells you that something freakish is happening that falls far outside of what you'd expect for a normal and healthy society. Like if I told you I work as a vampire hunter or something. 
The very fact that someone can become a crowdfunded writer doing commentary on the mass military violence of one particular power structure tells you that something has gone very wrong with this world. But there are plenty of others like me, and for every person there is making a living from opposing U.S. warmongering, there are thousands making a living from facilitating it in the military, in the arms industry, in think tanks, in the media, in politics, in government agencies. There is much, much more money to be made from war than from peace. That's one of the main reasons the capitalist empire we live under exists in a constant state of mass military violence. Endless violence and the threat thereof is the glue which holds the empire together. In a healthy world, none of these jobs would exist. People working for peace or people working for war. Peace would just be the natural order of things. But until that healthy world has emerged, we fight on. Day after day after day after day. For however long the work is necessary.